Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis. I am the Carb Addiction Doc, and today's topic is to discuss the cause of obesity and cardiovascular disease. And I know, it's like, oh, we know already what that is, it's sugar. But more and more, even my learned colleagues, who may be in the laboratory, may not necessarily be working in the trenches like I am, but are very experienced and very knowledgeable about biochemical pathways and biology. And if you've watched my stuff, you know how important that is to me. Even though I'm a clinically practicing surgeon, um, I, I do look to the biology, I do look to the biochemical processes to understand root cause, not just looking at observations. And more and more, my colleagues are being fascinated by the science behind polyunsaturated fatty acid metabolism as a cause of cardiovascular disease. Well, an interesting observation came to me the other day. I was in the hospital with a patient, and the patient couldn't eat and needed intravenous nutrition. Now, for well over a decade, uh, first of all, let me back up. The conventional wisdom when it comes to TPN or total parenteral nutrition is that people have to have sugar in their TPN. The sugar is the foundational source of calories in TPN. And in order to write for what we call central TPN, which is an adequate caloric value, say 2,000 calories a day, which is a misnomer by itself, we have to put a central line in. We have to put a central line in, either under the collarbone, in a pick line, uh, but we have to put a central line in because you cannot give central TPN into the peripheral veins. Okay, why not? Because for more than a decade, first and foremost, even in my diabetics, type 1s, type 2s, coming out of DKA, whatever it may be, I do not use dextrose, which is the intravenous form of sugar. I do not use dextrose. And I've had no patient die of a lack of calories or of a low blood sugar, as long as you back off on your diabetic medication. In fact, a lot of them are able to come off their diabetic medication even though they're on TPN. And also, one of the commonest things that we do is the sickest patients can't eat, so we have to put them on TPN in the intensive care units. And with COVID, that's become a big issue. And as soon as they put that dextrose into the IV, their blood sugars go so high that they have to put them on insulin. So you've converted somebody into the sickest type of patient, almost, which is an immunosuppressed diabetic, insulin-dependent diabetic person because you're pouring sugar into their veins. So that, that just doesn't make sense to me, that you're making them with what we obviously know is sick. Diabetes increases risk dramatically, especially when you're really sick, and activates the inflammatory system, which also makes people really sick as an independent variable. So it doesn't make sense to me. And I also have, as I said, a decade of knowledge of practicing without TPN, without, without sugar in my TPN, using amino acids and lipids, fat, as the macros, and absolutely fine in terms of my patient population, as long as I don't do that in kids under the age of two years of age. I haven't yet experimented with that, because those kids do need some sugar. Outside of two years of age, all the way through to adulthood and old adulthood, they don't. And there isn't a circumstance under which they need that sugar. Now, having said that, I was writing TPN for a patient the other day, and the patient just had a peripheral vein in place, uh, a peripheral IV, and I said, that's fine, just run it through the peripheral. Oh, but we have to run it centrally, we have to... And I said, folks, you don't have to run the TPN, even though it's fairly high concentrations of amino acids and lipids, you don't have to run it centrally because there's no sugar in it. Okay? What does that mean? See, what happens when you run high concentrations of sugar, more than 5% dextrose, more than 5 grams per 100 mLs of sugar, into a peripheral vein, it causes so much inflammation of that vein that the vein becomes inflamed and actually clots off, and you can get blood clots forming. So when we're giving concentrations higher than 5%, we have to put a central line in so that that huge dump of sugar can occur centrally close to the heart and mix with large volumes of blood so you don't get visible vascular injury. 
It's the only time that we know that sugar actually damages veins because normally our veins don't see very high concentrations of sugar. Hmm, interesting, doesn't it? Isn't that interesting? Because we can't measure what's happening in our arteries. We can't measure what's happening in our arteries when you eat a lot of sugar because we very rarely have access to the arteries. We do sometimes through a peripheral artery, but we don't check the sugars. So we have no idea what's happening on a high-carbohydrate diet in our arteries. But we know on TPN that it damages the blood vessels. Even 10%, 10 grams of sugar per 100 ml of fluid. That's less than in a can of Coke, folks. Substantially less than in a can of Coke. Nevertheless, if sugar causes that kind of vascular damage, and if sugar causes that kind of vascular damage in your arteries, and it causes clotting in the veins, it's going to cause the same kind of clotting in your arteries. And it's those clots that eventually clog up the vessels or can break off and travel downstream and cause your heart attacks and strokes. We know that absolutely. And just my use of TPN showed that to me. But what people are struggling with then is how, where does all this fatty tissue come from, these plaques, this coronary artery vascular disease, and, and this large artery, it's all fat, where does that come from? And it must be the polyunsaturated fatty acids in our diet. Well, folks, when I'm giving people TPN, unfortunately, and this is still a big frustration for me, ideally, I would like, like to give my patients primarily saturated fat with a little bit of monounsaturated fat and a little bit of polyunsaturated fat, but predominantly saturated fat. But no, 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 saturated fat is so bad. So even in the TPN that I do write for, and I'm giving my patients 500 mLs of a 20% fatty acid solution, it's almost all polyunsaturated fatty acids. It's almost all PUFA, PUFAs, that are so bad, that are causing diabetes, that are causing... And we run patients on TPN. I've got some short intestine kids that have been on that TPN for a decade. Their livers are fine. Their vessels are fine because there's no dextrose in there. So we don't have the, the liver damage that comes from the sugar. We don't have the vascular damage. We don't have the infection risk of requiring central lines in these kids. Because that's often a rate-limiting step. That often results in death when kids run out of blood vessels because they've thrombosed them all from the high sugar or from infections. Think about that. I'm a pediatric surgeon. However, all those kids are basically living on polyunsaturated fatty acids. It's not ideal. But we're not seeing the damage. We're not seeing the disease. There's a lot of biochemists sitting in labs that have, and I love what they do. It's brilliant work. They've figured out all the chemical pathways and they've looked at ketone genesis and they've looked at all of these things from the different types of fatty acids. But folks, every single day in my obesity, in my type 2 diabetes practice, I see the scourge of sugar. Every time I put someone on TPN or see someone on TPN, I see the scourge that sugar does. That's why I don't use it. People live absolutely fine without sugar. They cannot live absolutely fine without fat. And even though polyunsaturated fatty acids are not ideal, they keep people alive for decades without harm. It's the sugar that does the damage. And I understand it's critically important in the laboratory to figure out how polyunsaturated fatty acids can cause disease, how they can cause damage. But don't blame the water for what whiskey does if you're an alcoholic. Don't blame the fat for what sugar does, folks. We're struggling hard enough with obesity and diabetes. Stop. Stop with this message that it's not sugar, that it's polyunsaturated fatty acids. Intellectually, as a biochemical geek, it's great to work that out. But stop selling that nonsense to the public that's already struggling enough just with people telling them that sugar is okay to eat. For the sake of nutritional health, figure out in the laboratory, let's discuss it amongst ourselves as biochemists. I'm not claiming to be a biochemist, by the way, but as people that are interested in biochemistry in disease process. But stop saying 
that polyunsaturated fatty acids are the cause of cardiovascular disease. Stop saying that polyunsaturated fatty acids are the cause of type 2 diabetes and the cause of diabetes. They are not categorically. Nicotine and sugar cause cardiovascular disease. Sugar exclusively, carbohydrates cause obesity and cause type 2 diabetes. And if you take them away, nothing bad happens except you get healthy. If you take the polyunsaturated fatty acids away, bad things happen. Outcomes do matter, folks. And it's a very, very, very dangerous trend I'm seeing. When people start saying that the, na the human body should naturally be in a state of insulin resistance is the worst thing you can tell people who are struggling with insulin resistance as a disease. I understand what you're trying to say biochemically, but stop. Stop using those words. Stop using those words. Because they incite biochemical violence in your body. If you want to learn more, give me a shout, make some comments. I'd be happy to discuss it further. I'm not saying polyunsaturated fatty acids are good. But I'm also saying that they're not the evil that sugar is. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. This is an important message because we gotta, 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 gotta turn the ship back to where the issues are. That's an iceberg we don't want to hit. See you next time.